Welcome back to another episode of That's Business. Today's guest was born and raised in Michigan. After Beth graduated from Cranbrook, she attended the University of Arizona to become a pediatrician. Halfway through college, she switched her major to business. After graduation, Beth moved to Virginia Beach, got married, raised three beautiful boys, and started a landscape architecture company with her now ex-husband. Life threw her yet another curveball when she reconnected with her high school sweetheart. She decided to make the move back to Michigan and saw this as an opportunity to get into the medical field, which was a path she had abandoned in college. Beth went back to school for an intensive 12-week program and secured a position with Johnson & Johnson as a trauma medical device rep. This job was amazing, but the work-life balance was non-existent. Through the power of LinkedIn, she came across an opportunity to be a wine rep for Scout & Cellar. Beth says it's the best job ever and the opportunity for growth is unlimited. While working one of her wine tastings, she met Amy Peterson, the co-founder and previous guest on That's Business. Now she also works as the wholesale representative for Michigan for Rebel Now. Beth, thank you so much for coming on. I'm excited for this conversation. But before we dive into everything, I want to take it back a little bit. And what did you want to be when you grew up? Was it always this pediatrician or what were you like in your childhood? Yeah, always a pediatrician from as early as I can remember, kind of striving for something and imagining myself doing something. It was always a pediatrician. Love the babies and kind of don't get squirmy with blood and gut. So (laughs) that was something I really saw myself doing. And then during college, after my second year is when I kind of thought to myself, oh my gosh, I'm going to be in school forever. Yes. If I stay on this route, it's a little short-sighted now because now as we get older, we realize how fast that time goes anyways. True. But at the time, it seemed like it was just going to stretch on forever. So I made the shift to business at that point. I remember when I learned you got into landscape architecture, which is very unique. How did that come into play or what was the timeline of, okay, you decided I'm going to go into business and then how did the landscape architecture come into play with it? So my ex-husband actually has his degree in landscape architecture and he is the creative force behind that. So when we started this company, I was doing all the business stuff. And as you know, if starting a small business Mm -hmm. yourself, you wear all the hats, you know, between the two of us, we were wearing every single hat. So he was focusing on the creativity and a lot of the selling and coordination. And I was doing all the back office stuff. It wasn't my dream, but it worked for our family. And so, you know, before I know it, 25 years had gone by and that's what I had done. Wow. And of course, what you feel comfortable with, because I know a good bit of the story, us being friends, but what was kind of that moment when you were like, oh shit, like I want to change that you decided to go get a job at J&J, go back to school. What was that kind of process like if you feel comfortable sharing? Oh, yeah. Well, after my husband and I got divorced, I stayed in Virginia for three more years because my youngest son was still in high school and I wasn't going to uproot him during that time. So I had a few years where I was still there. And at that point, I had reconnected with my high school sweetie. So I knew the move back to Michigan was coming. So I kind of had a couple of years to wrap everything up there, and then figure out what my next step was going to be for the next act. And during that time, which I had a lot of apprehension at first, because I'd been doing this one thing for so long. Right. And here I was going to be, you know, in my early 50s, like starting over. So it was intimidating, but really exciting at the same time. And I had met someone who was a med device rep. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's what I want to do. I could take my sales experience get back into the medical field. I wouldn't have to go back to school to be a physician because I wasn't going to do it at that stage in the game, but to kind of ease my way back into that. You know, as life things like these usually happens, it's just these sort of random sets of meetings and coincidences and networking, and it takes you on paths that you, you didn't really ever see coming. It really does. And I have to know, because I just think it's the cutest story, but not to stray away from business, but how did you rekindle, because I love a good love story, but how did you reconnect with your high school sweetheart? How cute is that? So after I had separated and I was still coming back to Michigan a fair bit because my mom and sister still lived here. And I was actually back a little bit more right after the divorce because my mom had some minor health stuff. She just needed a little more help. So During that time, you know, through the power of Facebook, Mike had reached out a couple of times. Hey, how you doing? What's going on? And I was always like, what are you doing? You know, (laughs) 
get out of here. Way. Stay in your way. <laughs> and so I remained friends with his sister and he said, hey, I heard through my sister that you're coming back in town. Can we get together for a cup of coffee? And I thought, well, you know, sure, I'm I'm a single woman. I can have coffee Do whatever I you want. So, that's yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so I agreed to the cup of coffee and it ended up just being a life changing conversation that I never saw coming, never in a million years. So that was the start. So that's the start. So we changed. We can move back to Michigan. And then I want you to talk through. I remember how impactful it was when I you told this story for the first time, but you finished the program. I think you said you were in your 40s when you were went back into the program for... It was actually 51. Oh, you were 51. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So talk us through what that was like going back to school, getting into med sales, and then realizing like, ooh, maybe I don't want to do this. So um, when I first moved back here, I thought I had maybe enough connections that I was going to be able to break into that field. It's a really challenging field to break into. And even working that, I just wasn't making the headway. So there was a program, it was a 12-week program. And coincidentally, they didn't have one here in Michigan, but the school had one in Denver, which is where my boys all live. So I spent the whole summer there. But yeah, I was nervous. I hadn't been in that sort of academic setting. And I thought, geez, can my brain work that way? Like sit and retain and retain and retain and then regurgitate and take tests. Am I going to be able to achieve because I'm spending a lot of time and money to go to this program and wanted it to be a success and I wanted it to be the next step. So yes, it was very challenging. I was by far the oldest in the class. I think the average age of the other students was about 29 or 30, but I did it and I did really well. I worked really, really hard and it was very, very challenging, both mentally, physically, all those things totally got out of my comfort zone. But it also felt really exhilarating and it made me feel like, yeah, you you still got it in you. There's still a little juice in there. Uh, So then landed, came back after the program. And the school is really beneficial with helping you with interviews and setting up connections and got an offer from Cynthia's, which falls under the umbrella of Johnson & Johnson to work in their trauma um, field. And of all the sort of different paths I could have taken with this med device sales, trauma was probably the one I wanted the least just because it's so demanding because you're really on call 24-7 all the time, unless you're not in the state. But I also knew if I did really well at that, it was sort of the pinnacle job. Like if you could do really well in trauma under Johnson & Johnson, you could write your ticket and go anywhere. And when you're just starting out, even though I'm in my 50s, I'm just starting out in that field got to put your time in. You got to pay your dues. So I was willing to do that and was doing that through the pandemic. And that added a whole other twist. And I realized after, you know, about a year, like, wow, these people, they never see their families. They have no social life. And while I'm a really hard worker, I'm also at a phase in my life where I needed a little bit more balance. So it was really tough. Like you worked so hard to get this job, which was not an easy task to break into the field, but particularly because of my age. It's just a fact. Like no one in HR at Johnson & Johnson can say that, but it is the truth. So I thought, is this crazy to potentially walk away from something? But sometimes you just know in your gut, it's not your path. I achieved what I was looking for. I proved some things to myself. I I believe I did a really good job while I was in there. I left the company on great terms, but another opportunity presented itself. And I just, I couldn't say no. I knew in my heart and in my gut, it was the right thing to do. Well, and I feel like it was finally, I mean, not that I knew you back then, but I just feel like it was so much of you gave to your ex-husband. You helped him follow his dream. You raised three incredible children, some of which I have had the pleasure of working with. But it's just now I feel like it was finally like your time to do something for yourself since you gave so much to everyone else, which we love and appreciate. But talk us through how did this opportunity with Scout and Seller kind of come up and what were your thoughts going through it? Yeah. So the power of LinkedIn, right? I mean, it really is just, and you're so great on LinkedIn and you're my LinkedIn hero. I love to follow. And for anyone who doesn't know, Angela 
does great posts. She can definitely help you with LinkedIn as well, not only with her podcast resume rescue, but Thank you. her LinkedIn presence is great. And she knows a thing or two. So if you're struggling, don't hesitate to reach out. But I was utilizing LinkedIn to just kind of dig around because I thought I would still stay in medical device sales, but maybe do something like joint replacement. Because while you work a lot, those hours are kind of during normal operating hours. They're not like you're not getting a hip replacement at 2 a.m. on a Saturday morning. You know, they're very planned and scheduled. So while I was doing that, some a gal that I had connected with who lives in Missouri and she was a pharmaceutical rep, I think maybe that's why we made the initial connection, had left her pharmaceutical career to be a wine consultant for Scout and Seller. And I was like, you, you left that really lucrative job for that? I like wine. <laughs> Tell, me <laughs> more. Tell me more. Um, so I had some conversations with her and I was just so into the mission of the company. It was a young company at the time. They were just a little over three years old. We're five years old now. So I knew there was, there was always great potential when you can get into something particularly early on and there's a lot of growth. And you can already see, though, that the, the growth is happening. And This woman was doing such a great job and she was so professional in the way that she handled it. I thought she'll be a great mentor for me as well. And so I had a conversation and said, okay, I want to come on board. And then I remember the next morning telling me if my fiance, I was like, I think I started like something new that maybe just might be a side gig, but might turn into my full-time thing. And I thought, oh my gosh, I moved up here. I left him to go to the school. Then I take this job and as a device sales and work my butt off. And then now I'm switching to this. He might think that I'm a little bit crazy. <laughs> but he said, I think that's the most amazing thing. It sounds perfect for you. Go Aww. get it, babe. Yeah. So that's that's how it all began. Well, and it makes a difference, I feel, when you, I mean having gotten out of a relationship not too long ago, but it makes a difference when you have a partner that not even just respects you, but is like, yeah, I'm on the crazy train. Let's go. Let's see where it goes, you know, and just is right there with you. Yeah. It it would make it a little more challenging for sure. Yes. And like you said earlier, like I'm not complaining about my time working for the landscape company. That was, it wasn't my dream, but it grew and was very successful. Now, so you got this opportunity with a younger wine rep company. I want you to talk about how Scout and Cellar is different because I didn't realize that until we did our wine tasting together. But why is Scout and Cellar so different than any other wine company out there? So our wine company actually was started by a gal, Sarah Shatniks, and she is actually an attorney who loved wine and was studying to be a level three sommelier. So She was making her way up the ranks in the wine world as well. It was her passion. She loved it. But she started having bad effects from the wine. She started not feeling well, getting headaches, having like her stuffy feeling. And she was like, hmm, this is a bit of a problem because I love wine, but now I'm really struggling with it. Not all the time, but often. So she did a big deep dive and realized it wasn't the wine, it wasn't the grapes, it wasn't alcohol. It was a lot of times stuff that can be added to the wines, whether in the vineyard where it's growing or during the winemaking process. And because wine isn't FDA regulated, the companies don't have to put on the bottle what is in there other than a few things like your alcohol volume and the grapes, but all the extra little additives don't need to be included. So she said, I'm going to start a company that has total transparency and all of our wine is going to um, not have any chemicals or pesticides in the vineyard where the grapes are being grown or in the winery when those beautiful grapes are being turned into wine. And no matter where we source our grapes from anywhere in the world, it's always going to meet this standard. And along the way, she also had the vision for, you know, being as kind to the earth as possible. So we use lighter bottling, all of our packages recycling. We have a business plan to be carbon neutral within a couple of years. Yeah. So, and now we've just actually also um, expanded into coffee because coffee is, which I didn't know. I didn't know the things I don't know, but 
coffee apparently has a lot of mold in it oftentimes. So we now have a line of coffee as well. So we got you morning tonight, right? Start you with a cup of coffee and with a glass of beautiful wine. And we have a different business model too. We don't sell in grocery stores or liquor stores. It's only directly to our customers. And then the wine is mailed right to your doorstep. But she didn't want our wine just to be another label on your shelf. And frequently that's actually how people choose wine. You choose the wine either because you already know it and love it. Mm -hmm. Your friends are talking about it. And if neither of those apply, you're like, that's a pretty label. I'll take that. (laughs) (laughs) Literally how I decide for my friends. I do am not a red wine drinker. And I'm like, I like dragons. Let's go with that label. (laughs) Yes. So you prove the point. You and, you know, millions of other people, myself included, I've done that for sure in the past. So if our wine's just on a shelf, no one's going to really know the story of what sets our wine apart from most wines. Look, there are a few other wines out in the world, but particularly small vineyards that do things, you know, naturally like us, but no one as a as a whole brand does that with the kind of outreach that we have and the kind of sourcing that we use from grapes from all over the world. And When I ordered from you, so we, for those that don't know, we did a vision board with Carolyn, who was on, I don't even remember what episode at this point. And Beth comes with wine tasting, beautiful pairing. And I ordered wine and I was like, okay, cool. Like, you know, when it gets to me, when it gets to me. And then it was at my doorstep, I think two days later or three days later. And I ordered coffee because your girl loves some coffee. And I'm like still so impressed. And I've told so many people about it just because not only is the packaging beautiful and your girl here loves sustainability, so love that it's recyclable. But I was not expecting the little, and you might have told me this, but my, I might not have listened. The, I mean, little um, K cup thing to so you can put it in your Keurig, and then the scoop, the wooden scoop that comes with it, and doubles as a closer for the bag. And I, the coffee was so stinking good. Myself with all the allergies in the world, the wine never makes me upset. It's so funny, Beth, because I was thinking of you. My boyfriend and I went on a date night and something was not, whatever I was drinking was not working with me. So I'm sneezing, I'm going crazy. And then I'm telling him about Scout and Cellar at dinner, just laughing, thinking of you. Because I'm like, see, your wine doesn't do that to me, but whatever I was drinking was. So mm-hmm. I just love it. I just think it's such a great company and especially being woman owned too, because it is yes. a big issue. Mm-hmm. But yes, I love well, that. Thank you. Thank you. Sure I love thing. it too. Yeah, I love no. it too. On that very rare occasion, I mean, that's really all we drink at the house. And most of the times, even when we go to a restaurant, we'll just bring a bottle and pay a corking fee as long as the restaurant allows that. But every once in a blue moon, we've been out somewhere, didn't grab a bottle of wine and we'll order a bottle or a glass. And we had been at a steak house. And of course, you have to have a, like a big, beautiful cab when you're having right. a steak, I think. And We ordered a bottle and each had a glass. And the next day, we both had the worst headache. And this was, you know, a really nice bottle of Mm -hmm. wine. So, and I know that's not just me, you know, convincing myself. Like, I really felt bad the next day. But yes, thank you. It does. Most of the time, people don't get it in two to three days. That was particularly fast. But usually within the week from the time you order, it does show up. Our delivery system's pretty good. Yeah. Depends on the time of year too, right before Christmas. Maybe not so, but yeah. Right. Now I want to also dive into the Rebel Nell side of you as well, Mm -hmm. but what is in store kind of for 2023 with Scout and Cellar? For those people that are listening that maybe want to do a wine tasting or what kind of events do you do? What do you have in store for this year? Yeah. So one of the really beautiful things about this particular job is as long as I'm compliant, particularly because there's alcohol involved. There's a few hoops we have to jump through. We really get to create my days and evenings to look how I want them to look. The biggest way that we market is doing small in-person tastings. And it can be like a girl's night or we did one for Resume Rescue. So it can sort of be like corporate team building type event. I've definitely done some couples. Sometimes companies will do it like as a vendor appreciation or anything like that. So all those I look forward to and they each are kind of fun in their own way. So for the rest of the year, I'll just be planning a few of those each month. We have some new products continuing to come out. They're expanding the coffee. We also have olive oil and vinegar. Our founder has a big vision sort of of being clean crafted 
across the board in a lot of different food and beverage categories. I don't even know exactly what that means yet, but seeing the trajectory that I have in the last two years, I'm sure it will be amazing and well thought out all all along the way. So yeah, just continuing doing what I'm doing, servicing my current customers, gaining new ones, introducing more people to our beautiful products. I have a few people who have become consultants as well. So I help mentor them along the way. Some of them live here in the state of Michigan. Some of them are out of state. So it's just continuing to grow my business with my customers and also continuing to help my team grow and flourish. And um, so that's the yeah scout and seller side. I love that. Now, because I was actually at the event where you came across Amy, which was funny, but Uh what happened? I mean, I watched it happen in real time, which was lovely, but tell us what happened, what you were doing and how this beautiful kind of partnership came together. So I was doing a tasting at M3, which is a networking event that Angela and I are both part of. And it was at Dick O'Dow's for you local people, but it's a cute little local pub in our town. And during the event, they had a guest speaker and it was Amy Peterson, who I'd never met and I didn't know any of her story, but she got up there and told the story of Rebel Nell. And I know Amy's been a guest on your podcast as well. So I highly encourage everyone who's listening to this to go back and listen to Amy's because she can give you the much broader picture. But in a nutshell, she also is a lawyer. I seem to gravitate towards these female lawyers who then have these yes. passion projects <laughs> who during the course of her events of her life decided that she wanted to reach out and help some women that she had got to know that lived in a shelter close to where she lived in Detroit. And the long and short of it is she started a jewelry company. And the jewelry company is called Rebel Nell and it employs women typically from the shelter to come in and be our jewelry designers. And then the extra money that the company earns, we provide a lot of wraparound services to help launch these women back to independent living because oftentimes they need more than just a job to really be successful and independent. They're facing a lot of barriers throughout their lives, whether it's economic or social or family structure. So we provide really anything else that they might need in order to kind of get back on their own feet and move forward and live a successful life. So when I heard her speak about that, I walked up to her. I remember saying to her, I just want to be in your orbit. Like you are, you're so often, myself, I've been guilty of this. And people say, oh, I should do something. I want to do something. What can we do? What can we do? And, and, and maybe we do something at the holidays or make a donation or something, but And it's all great and we should all keep doing that. But the desire to do something more impactful um, where you can really see the results. I said, this girl is doing that thing. I want to help. And I thought I was just going to help maybe come and volunteer. And she said, well, I need a wholesale jewelry rep for the state of Michigan. And I said, well, I got a gig because she knew because I was there pouring. And she said, I think you can do both. Amy is really good at <laughs> bringing people in into that. So that was that. Yeah, that was last summer I met her. And then in the fall, shortly before the holiday season, um, I came on board. So I'm currently doing both. And sometimes they go hand in hand and there's wine and jewelry sales happening. But right now I'm just working hard. I'm like, really giving both of these things the amount of time and attention they deserve. I love that. That's amazing. It's so interesting. I mean, not to get all cheesy, but I mean, just the opportunities of you happen to be here, you happen to join this group, and it's just the connectivity on that. But that's incredible. Now, for 2023, now on the Rebel Nell side, what exciting things are going on for Rebel Nell and what you're doing? They're always creating new lines. So I don't even know some of the stuff that they kind of have in the works at this point. But they actually just did a really cool collaboration with Lady Pink, who's this graffiti artist. And Mm -hmm. she created a mural that we then took and reused the graffiti to make the jewelry. So we're in the midst of launching that. I'm sure there's going to be more stuff as the, the year goes on. We have our International Women's Day event 
coming up in March as well. There's always events happening where she does mural making and team building experiences. So it's just kind of more of the same and then continuing to grow the customer base, mostly in small boutiques around the state, because the more people that have our jewelry and sell it, the more women we can help. So true. I love that. Now, I'm excited because I'm really excited for that event. So myself and my team will be there. But Oh, yay. Yes. But Beth, as we wrap this up, what advice do you have for listeners? You know, work hard, but follow your gut. And Ooh. don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to keep trying and getting out of your comfort zone because that's really where the growth happens. But also listen to your gut too, because sometimes your head and your gut can be in opposition. Right. So. I'm glad that I that I did that. And I'm glad that I had the freedom and opportunity to do that because I realized sometimes it's easier said than done and can be in a circumstance where it's not that easy just to make a switch. Very much so. Incredible. Well, Beth, first of all, thank you so much. And this was so much fun. What thank great- you, Angela. But for those of you listening, if you want to get in touch with Beth, head to our show notes. I have a link to her information, websites, everything like that. And thank you again for listening to another episode of That's Business. If you're looking for a career change and you're not sure where to start, the Resume Rescue can help. Sure, there's no such thing as the perfect fit for everyone. But here at the Resume Rescue, we're on a mission to find the perfect solution for you. Whether it's changing careers, updating a resume, learning LinkedIn, or practicing interviewing, we have you covered. Find us online at theresumerescue.com and find all of our contact info in our show notes.